Hi everybody. All right. Um, just to kind of tie things together for this massive project I've got coming up, I thought it'd be a good idea to put out a couple of tutorials just so I can go a little more in depth as to my processes. And then during the actual build videos, I can then reference back to these videos so that if you want more detail, you can come here and find the video and find the detail that you'd want to know if you're looking to do this for yourself at home. But that way I'm not clogging up this massive build with just information that's something that I can put out as a separate video. That way it doesn't take quite so long because these videos can get so long if I leave all of this information in. So today we're going to be melting HDPE, recycling plastic number two. Um, it stands for high density polyethylene. It's found most commonly in things like milk jugs and oil jugs and uh, anything that you'd have like in cleaners. They're flexible. Uh, they're really easy to work with. They sand great. They mold great. Also plastic bags like uh, grocery sacks are also number two. I definitely think this is going to be something that's going to be good information for you to know if you're looking to do this for yourself in the future. But let's get started. So the first thing I need to do is tear out the weight of the container. I need to weigh how much plastic I'm putting into this mold so that I know how much to put in next time. Whether I use too much or too little, I haven't worked with this mold a whole lot yet, so this is just the best way to be the most accurate with it. So what I've got here is uh, shredded up HDPE. And now what I need to do is just weigh the amount that I've got in here. I think that this will be enough. And if it's too much, I can always just weigh what I've got left over and do my measurements from there. All right, so it looks like this is 7.9 ounces is what I've got in the container here. So we will see how that works out. Okay, so what I've got right here is a cookie sheet with a piece of parchment paper. Parchment paper is essential because otherwise it will stick really bad <laughs> to the cookie sheet and then you won't be able to get it off. And it just makes for not very fun time. All right, what I do here is I fill up this baking sheet because eventually the size of the mold is about yay big. And so what I do is I fill up the cookie sheet because eventually I'll want to fill in all these little gaps and holes that are left by the little shreds that just don't quite make it together. So when you fold the piece together, it will uh, make it a little thicker and a little easier to handle uh, getting it into the mold. I get a nice thick layer on there and I've got my oven preset to 350 degrees. All right, and now that I've got a nice thick layer on there, I'm gonna stick it in there for about, oh, 10 minutes or so, and that should be all melted and ready to go. All right, and just so I can give you guys an idea on how I got the shredded plastic in the first place, um, this is my modified paper shredder. This one is rated to take credit cards and CDs and all sorts of things. So um, I purchased this shredder, I believe, for like $170 or something like that. Um, and Tiva is the brand. Um, I had one of these once before and I was seriously impressed. It lasted over a year of me just throwing every plastic I could think of at it. So, so the shredder has turned out very nicely. Now I did have to modify it because the hole on the top here, you just could not fit anything through here. I don't need to put anything thicker through here, but everything is just super, it'd have to be super flat to go through. And sometimes with the HDPE, the number two plastic, it just isn't wide enough for me to fit things through there. So what I had to do is here and here, there were two little sensors that when a piece of paper comes in, it tells the machine to turn on. So what I did is I took the sensors off and then covered them up because when a piece of paper passes through the beam of light that is put between the two sensors, that's what triggers the system and tells it that there's a piece of paper in there. Now, if they're always covered, the system is thinking that there is constantly a piece of paper in there. So this machine is either off or it's on. So it is a little dangerous. I'm not telling you to do this. I'm just showing you what I am doing. Okay, so what I've got here, um, this is PET plastic. Uh, this is pot bottles, number one uh, polyethylene terephthalate. So this is not what I'm using in the project, but that's just currently what I am shredding in the machine right now. So that's what I wanted to show you. And so you just come back here and you turn the little switch on. And then taking care to keep your fingers back. Okay, so this is what it looks like when it comes out. And then the reason I shred it beforehand is it gives a much nicer melt. It melts much quicker and melts much more evenly. And it's less prone to air bubbles if you would put two strips or pieces together in there. 
I'd also like to show you guys too, um, I also do use this one on occasion. Um, I'm not going to use it today, uh, but this here is my old George Foreman. Um, it started to get some rust and some scratches, and so I put it out here to use for this purpose because I was no longer going to use it for food. Um, you can use this. I don't recommend uh, using your home oven for this. Uh, this is just an electric oven I picked up and wired in to work in my garage. But if you don't have the space or um, the availability to get to a machine outdoors, you can melt indoors, but I would recommend doing it in a well-ventilated area. As far as I'm aware, through my research, there's no harmful chemicals that are put off by melting HDPE. However, it does not smell the best. And especially if you're in like an apartment or something, I would recommend doing this outdoors. Um, this here is, like I said, the George Foreman. I do use that on occasion. Just make sure if you use a machine like this, like a panini press, just make sure you put a layer of uh, parchment paper on both the top and the bottom. Do not use wax paper. I found that out. <laughs> it does not work. It wax paper, it sticks. So parchment paper, uh, top layer and bottom layer so that it doesn't stick to the machine. You can also use a uh, toaster oven or anything like that that will get up to the proper temperature. Um, there are several things that you can use, uh, get creative, figure it out, but I just happened to use the oven for this one. All right, so it's been in for about 15 minutes. It's pretty melted. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is fold it into thirds, essentially. Well, fold each side up so that they meet in the middle. If I can get it to unstick from the parchment paper. Here's a lid to my press. I'm just kind of seeing what room I've got to work with here. So I want it to be as reasonably close as I can to the size it needs to be so that there's no gaps or anything left. So I'm just gonna fold up these edges in so that they're not sticking out. Put this back in to the oven for just a couple minutes to let it be fully warmed up before I put it into the mold. All right, now here what I'm using is this little jig that I've got set up. Um, it's just some pieces of angle iron that are welded together. And then inside here is a bottle jack. And then the, the general idea is when I push the bottle jack up with the plastic in the center of the mold, when the bottle jack cranks up, it pushes up against the top of uh, the jig here and compresses the plastic down. Now, before I can put that in there though, it's always important. Um, I've used wood molds in the past, but the problem with wood molds is they don't last. They degrade over time um, and screw holes pull out and things like that. The welded molds with the steel are much better. And not only that, wood is very it has very insulated properties. So uh, using the steel, it cools off a lot faster. So, cause ordinarily it would take something of this size over an hour to cool down and that's just not a proper use of time so having the steel mold the steel adjusts to the ambient temperature around it a lot quicker so it definitely cools off a lot faster so but before i can put anything in there it's always 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 important to preheat the mold because if you put the hot plastic in a cold piece of steel it cools it down way too quickly and you're not going to get a very good press so here i've just got a propane torch and i'm just going to preheat the inside of the mold and it doesn't have to be glowing hot, it's just going to be hot enough to the plastic. And then I'm going to hit the top here too. Alright, we are ready to go. While it's hot like this, it's like a dough. You can do whatever you need to do to it. but. Because what I'm going to end up doing with this is making a fake iron look, I definitely kind of want some of these divots and impressions. It gives it a more realistic finish. All right, so 
and I'm just gonna stick this here on the inside. I can get it centered. jack it up too hard and break my machine but definitely want to give it a good press all right I'm gonna let that sit for about 20 minutes and then it should be ready to demold okay so you have to make sure that this is cool before you demold it otherwise the plastic inside will warp um, this has been sitting for about an hour and a half two hours um, I did feel it though around 25 minutes in and it felt cool enough to demold but I got distracted with some other some other things to work on but Yeah, the surface is a little bit um, bumpy and shreddy from the shredder still, but when I run this through the sander, it's definitely gonna be a lot smoother. Um, I could also too, I do plan on, um, for the project that I need, I need these to be bent. So it is still a little flexible, but I'm going to bend it in the shape, the final shape that I need it to. So at that point, I'm gonna put it back in the oven and then remelt it. And then when it's hot, I'm going to take it out and bend it over the shape that I need it to. But for now, um, there are a lot of other finishing techniques that you could use. Like I said, this sands very, very well. Um, these little tiny edges too that are kind of sticking up, you can always take like a razor blade and uh, clean the edges up that way. Um, you can put this through a planer. This is a little too thin to go through the planer. Uh, but if you had a thicker piece, you could send it through a planer or use a hand planer. There's a lot of different variety of techniques that you can use, but for these, um, I think I'm going to leave them just the way that they are. So thank you so, so much for watching. And I can't wait to get on to showing you guys what I'm going to build next. Stay tuned for the next video because the next video will be the announcement about what project I'm actually going to be working on. So we look forward to seeing you soon.